Hi, I'm Kelly at Book and Paper Arts, and today I'm going to talk about how to make illustrated journal pages from your everyday life. Even if, and especially if, you can't think of anything to draw or illustrate. Every time I post a video showing journal how-tos or flip-throughs, I get the same comment over and over again, and it goes something like, well, it's an interesting idea, but... I can't think of anything interesting enough in my own life that's worth drawing about. Well, you are mistaken. And today I'm going to share some ideas and examples from people with names like uh, Vincent, Frida, and Michelangelo that will show you how mistaken you are and will encourage you to make visual diary pages of your mundane Ordinary, day-to-day, -day, glorious life. I'm going to show some examples of their pages. I'm going to show a few of mine. And then I'm going to wrap the whole thing up with a pep talk and the story of two little notebooks that will help you see how and why you should be making some pages. If you like journal arts and altered books, Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and turn on the little bell. Be sure and turn on the notifications and you will have more of them in your life. Let's go look at pages. Let's start with some examples by artists and illustrators who did not wait until they were having a really interesting day to start getting their ordinary life down on the page. Albrecht Dürer was uh, and is considered the finest draftsman in history. Yet somehow, in between making woodcuts and nature studies and portraits, he thought it was interesting enough to draw his pillows. This is from 1493. So hundreds of years ago, Albrecht Dürer was drawing his pillows. It looks to me like he drew one and then smushed it up and drew it again. Then maybe he took a nap or two, and then drew it again, picked the cat up off it and drew it again. And all I'm saying is that if these humble pillows were interesting enough for Albrecht Dürer, then maybe we should think about it. This is a page by Van Gogh, and it's, it's very simple. You've just got some mark making here that I think represents a little bit of landscape. But what really draws your eye on this page is that he just drew his pencil. It's just so simple, but really compelling. Here is another page of his that uh, it's actually a letter. And he's drawn his room. Now, this was a very, very simple room. He just had this this bed and a washing area and then some chairs and a window. And it's even though he was also a fine draftsman, he did this in a sort of a cartoony style, just a quick drawing. So you could do the same. Just look at your room and quickly draw it out. Sketch what catches your eye. Here's another one of his pages, and this one is looks like it's a breakfast scene. It's just got a little coffee pot and some eggs and a teacup. So you can always just draw your breakfast. I really like to illustrate my uh, recipes sometimes, too. It's another version of that. Now, this is not an illustrated journal. This is, a, again, a letter by Frida Kahlo. And at the end, she's sending some kisses to her friends and her husband. Um, not saying that you have to make lip prints, but my point is you can have your writing with just a little bit of a visual element of something immediate and at hand, and it will really make your page interesting and pop and fun. Finally, let's look at this. This is uh, a shopping list by Michelangelo. And he's written out what he wants here, but he was giving this to his servant who was illiterate. So he actually drew out all of the items so that his 
when his servant was going to the market, he could say, I think he wants a fish and some lemons and uh, whatnot. Because it can't always be the Sistine Chapel. Sometimes it just has to be a shopping list that you make a page out of. And here is a book that I am reading called The Pebbles on the Beach. I am enjoying the heck out of this. It's really just a natural history of the pebble. And I wanted to show this illustration that's come with this new edition of the book to show how, again, something super simple and humble, done in an almost cartoony style, like these pebbles, these little stones, can make just a beautiful illustrated journal page. Not the least because one of my favorite ways to make day-to-day -day pages is to just make little visual accounts of what I find on my walks. It could be in your yard or garden or a nearby park. Sometimes it's feathers, sometimes it's leaves, sometimes it's little stones that are really pretty. And just put some stuff in your pocket and when you get home, put it all out and draw little pictures of it and make some notes and hey presto, you have a really good journal page from your everyday life. Here are a few pages of everyday items in my own illustrated journal. This is just a view of the desk I have in my bedroom. I've done it very simple, very quick style, not very sophisticated, just using a pen. That's a stack of hats. I live in a very small flat and those hats got to go somewhere. It's my laptop, lamp, and just different things, bibs and bobs. I've given them little labels. But I actually thought that that was such an apt drawing of something that's an important part of my everyday life that I wrote little stories about it, some details. It's the same idea here. This is just a bag drop. And I had to take a long bus ride recently and I wanted to over prepare with so I made kind of a survival kit in my yellow backpack. And again, what is in my survival pack is so uh, such a part of my everyday life that I just thought it would make a good page. So a few things there, and then I wrote about it. Not very jazzed up, just mundane, but a good page. These are some coffee cups that and, and teacups that I have that I use a lot. And um, just open up your cupboard, see if you've got anything in there that says something about you that you want to write about. Ah, there we go. My version of the pebble page. I was out for a hike with my uh, friend, and she is a very good fossil spotter and she was able to she found these little rocks with prehistoric snail fossils and I found some some other little pebbles with uh, some garnet quartz in them it's just really pretty little things that I put on my windowsill so this is one uh, a view of the things that I'm looking at every day and two a reminder of that walk a memory. Uh, let's see, I just found some really good hot sauce. Don't tell me you can't draw your condiments because I'm pretty sure that you can. Oh, and talk about mundane. I have had plantar fasciitis for several months now. And that is a big word that means foot pain. It, uh, it's, it's very mundane. I certainly don't want to talk about it a lot, but it has really affected my life and what I do over the last few months and how I'm treating it. So it does make kind of an interesting page. Uh, hopefully I'm going to be shot of this thing soon, but then I can look back at this and remember what was going on. There are 
were, those were some ideas about how. Now here's a pep talk about why. Why you should consider making a visual diary of your everyday life. It's like this. Our ordinary days, those are the journey. And it's the only journey that we are going to get. If you create a visual diary, an illustrated book, some pages, then you are making a witness to those days and their own inherent meaning. Then there's this. If you do that, if you show up for your own life, just like this, then you are giving other people permission to do the same thing. You are encouraging other people to be witness and show up on the page and celebrate the ordinary in the day-to-day. As we give each other permission and encourage each other to do that, we will become a little bit more bold and a little bit more creative. And As we become one by one, little bit by little bit, more bold and more creative, we will be making the world a better place, or at least a less bad one. And I truly believe that. Okay, so if making the world a better place is still not a convincing reason to get you making pages of your ordinary life, Then there's the story of the little notebooks. These belonged to my grandmother, to my dad's mom. And uh, I never met her. She died rather young. She was a farmer's wife or a farmer herself in rural Mississippi in the Great Depression. She had five kids, and times were hard. She managed at some point to get a few hens, and she started a little business selling eggs. The money was much needed. And these are the notebooks of her accounts. And... uh, I never met her. And this is just about all I have, this in one photograph. But let me tell you, these notebooks are so precious to me. They truly are treasure and a connection to a woman that I really wish I could have met. Here's the deal. She was... There was no way she was going to have the luxury of making little drawings to go with these um, figures. But a lot of us do. So consider this. Make your own accounts, your own uh, egg and butter accounts of the details of your days. And if you can, add a little doodle, add a little sketch. Uh, What's on your desk? What's on your windowsill? What's on your shopping list? You don't need much to make it really, really special, just a pencil and a notebook. And if you do, you might be making treasure for someone that might not even be born yet. It really is treasure. I really hope that this will get you started. If you need some more ideas about how to make illustrated journal pages, I have a couple of resources for you. I have an online class, an online course called The Book of You, How to Make and Keep Illustrated Journal Pages. And I'm going to link to that in the text below this video. I also have on this channel a playlist that's just called Illustrated Journals. So if you want to check out a little library of how-to videos and flip-throughs. Just click on playlists, go through it until you find illustrated journals, and then you can click on see full playlist. You can have a lot of tools there as well. So please let me know if you have any questions 
or feedback in the comments below. We can compare notes. Until later, get up and start making pages.